Fortnite Ranked just came out yesterday and I played it for an entire day. I'm elite, not the flex, but it's basically... And unfortunately, we need to talk about what the future of Fortnite competitive is and what the ranked mode means for Fortnite. So let's go through all the issues and what happened yesterday because there's a lot to cover here. First of all, we had insanely long queue times. Now, that doesn't even start off with where people place themselves as a ranked. For example, we had players like Veno placing themselves into gold in this first game. Me, Percy, I got myself a one elimination 60th in my first game. And guess what I got? Platinum 3. And I'll be honest, I'm very good at the game, but not that good to which I be, should be placing a Platinum 3 off my placement game initially. So, in... In terms of your placement game, it seems a little bit confusing as to what the actual method is in order to determine that because I saw a lot of really good players being put way below me and a lot of very good players as well being put way above me. For example, we had players like Seti who got into Diamond 1 instantly, so it seems a little bit backwards. I've even seen people drop 30 bombs, 40 bombs in the first game and get themselves into bronze somehow. So it seems like the better you did in your first game, the worse rank you got. Hmm. Not to mention now, after that, we ended up playing a bunch of games on stream as well. And a lot of the people that I knew and were in my chat room realized, hey, when I hit Diamond 2, I can't play anymore. And the issue there was essentially all the Diamond 2 players that existed in Europe, because obviously there was the time zone for Europe, they couldn't play any games. And the reason was this. Diamond 1 was able to queue up with one rank above and one rank below. I believe that's how it worked, and that's what it seems like with the issue that was caused is the way that it used to work. So Diamond 1 players could play with Diamond 2 players and against Platinum 3 players, which is one below them. But because Diamond 2 players can't be in the same lobby as a Platinum 3 player, because it's only one above or one below, well, that means essentially that... Everyone that's in Diamond 1 is essentially getting to a game with the Plat 3 players, which means those Diamond 2 players can't get into their game, which caused hours and hours of long queue times until they ended up hotfixing it. Even Fortnite status replied to my tweet saying they were working on it in the moment, and within a few hours, a hotfix was placed in order to increase, uh, I guess, the, the, the ELO ranges to put people into more different lobbies. But, again... It wasn't ideal. The next thing that was a bit of an issue overall was the performance issues. And obviously, this is something that we were going to expect when we have literally everything that's in pubs into a competitive game mode. The performance was bad. Now, personally, I don't have the best PC, but I know from other people that I know of that are, you know, big pro players and grinders, they also had issues with performance. The game felt laggy, it felt unstable. It didn't feel like the competitive servers that we are used to. Now, this is probably because of two different things, more than likely, either A, it's because of pubs, right? Pub lobbies have bots, it has fire, it has Star Wars stuff, it has a bunch of stuff that's going to make the game a little bit more laggy, which makes it harder for the servers to handle it. And that's probably what's been causing the initial lag. But secondly, which is also a big question, is maybe they're just using the casual pub servers for competitive, right? Because if we think about it, the competitive servers are high tech rate servers, so they're a little bit better for performance, which means that they're a little bit more expensive. And if they want to host a ranked mode sort of matchmaking, it's probably going to be very costly in order to get 300, 500,000 people into those lobbies, into those servers, compared to what is usually like 100,000 to 50,000 people in a tournament. So that might be one of the reasons why performance might be a little bit bad. I'm not even, I'm not guaranteed sure if that's the case, but that could be the issue if, um, because everything is basically one-to-one -one with pubs and pubs are hosted on worse lobbies considerably because they don't get stacked end games and good end games. Speaking of those end games, we didn't really see too much of what we want in competitive Fortnite, right? The issue that we have and what we want is that we want stacked end games as competitive players. But the issue is how do we stop players from W keying and pushing other players and getting and not taking the practice or the ranked mode seriously in this case. Well, it seems very obvious that Epic is trying to replace scrims, for example, with ranked, right? Um, they removed custom matchmaking for now out of ranked, even though that's intended to be changed more than likely in the future for scrims. They're making pubs and ranked one-to-one. -one. They're making a competitive mode. Seems all very swift in order to remove the scrim atmosphere within every single region. But if it's not replaced, if it's meant to be replacing scrims, then the games have to be stacked. It has to be emulating towards a tournament. And it just currently isn't. Even when it was hard to get into game, even when we got 10 to 15 to 20 minute lobbies, the games were still unstacked. People were still W keying. There's no risk reward there. 
people don't care about the 20 minute queue time obviously they do but they they don't care enough to not wq that game and take it completely seriously because you're not incentivized to play for late game i played a personal game myself at around a, at around platinum three to diamond level i got myself a, th a third place with one elimination right i played the game perfectly i played fully end game uh, i made it to 11th moving zone and then i died in third place i gained six percent from that game just from playing the game fully towards end game if I had W keyed in comparison, let's say I got 10 kills in that game, I probably would have gone up 30 to 40% in comparison. So it seems like there's a bit of a flaw in the way that they're manipulating points and the way that you can improve on because you're not incentivized to play fully for late game. If you die or spawn, it's usually about 3 to 6% that you lose. Uh, up towards the higher ranks, it may be towards uh, champs division, you lose about 14%. But again, it is so easy, you can just drop a 30 bomb in those lobbies because of now the widespread ELO that people don't really care that much anyways. And speaking of those elos, the hotfix that they changed before end up making it more manageable in order to get into champs and unreal lobbies. Last night I was queuing at 1 to 2 a.m. with a full squad of unreal and champs players. I was personally elite and we pretty much got six to seven minute queue times. Uh, but again, even though we're at the highest rank possible, right? We're on unreal champs lobbies. We are still getting 20 people alive in third zone, 30 people alive in fourth zone. Everybody hot dropping Bastion, everybody hot dropping Mega City. There is no incentive not to W key. So, this rank mode is a bit of a sham, honestly. It's not really replacing what we want it to be. I, I do think there was one, there is a lot of room for improvement, but unfortunately, the Fortnite community is a little bit too impatient for it. And more than likely, Scrim is going to be taking back over this ranked mode. The next thing I want to talk about are tournament loop pools. And this one is going to be a little bit spicy because uh, there's some stuff that you might not like, like Siphon that is being removed. So, tournament loopholes are as follows. And this comes from a tweet from Osirian GG that I've also posted on my own Twitter account, twitter.com slash underscore if you want to go check that out. The tournament loophole is as follows. There are less fishing spots, which probably is, is a way to react to the heal-off situation, less forged items or stuff like berries, stuff on the floor you can pick up, or there's less of them, also probably to disincentivize heal-off or white health. There's zero fireflies, so they're trying to remove fire, obviously, which is an issue related to performance. There's no reignited campfires. Again, a way to prevent the stuff from the heal off like crazy rats. We have no cars, no ODM gear, no Star Wars stuff, and also no siphon. Now, those last four are the most important ones because the most relevant ones to competitive. No cars. Again, performance related issues is the number one concern as we, as we saw in the blog post relating to loot pools and stuff like that, that they may change stuff. So cars being removed is a good thing. ODM gear, we learned that lesson from the past few weeks of how strong ODM gear is overall but this is probably an issue due to the bugs that are currently in the game as well the star wars stuff obviously horribly broken it is completely uncompetitive being removed is a very very good thing also relating to server capability because npcs running on the map makes it a little bit more laggy but the last part is the one that i think a lot of people are going to be very disagreeing with and it is no siphon. So no siphon means that when you do get an elimination, you do not get 50%, you do not get 50 HP of your health back. We're assuming you do get your materials back because that's the same as it is in ranked currently, but no siphon is gonna change the game of competitive completely, I feel like. A lot of players are very reliant on siphon. It gives you the ability to play storm, gives you the ability to clutch up as a solo. It brings us exciting gaming moments in those late games. It gives you the ability to make moves. It gives you the chances to fight multiple teams at a time when you get a third party. Having no siphon, as you probably saw and felt when you were playing ranked, feels so slow, feels horrible as a competitive player that it is a staple. But unfortunately, it's probably not going to be into loot pools right now. And uh, who knows if they're going to add it into the future because the seemingly path that we're going on to right now is that they're wanting to make loot pools or pubs and ranked basically one-to-one, -one, right? They want it to be the same. They want it to be like other esports, like League of Legends, CSGO, Valorant, where when you play a casual game and then you play a ranked game, it is exactly the same. But I feel like Epic's sort of missing the ball because we're a battle royale. We're playing a battle royale, which is completely different. The way that competitive works and is structured relies on a few core fundamentals that we're so used to, that is the core of Fortnite. It's like removing building, essentially, that um, it seems like we're not really on the right path completely yet, 
but them removing some of the items like like star wars like odm like cars is a decent step for now but i'm not going to give too much credit because we have a long way to go and more than likely i feel like six months down the line we're going to be back to square one where we were today with the stuff that was removed the stuff that was changed because at the end of the day that is what the core competitive community wants and trying to change that within a day in some random ranked mode that isn't even good isn't the right way to do it on a positive note i did see some positive comments about the scrim uh, about the ranked experience more or significantly that of zero build zero build actually had some decent end games 20 people movings in zero build which you know if it's positive for someone that's great there you go uh, but not for the core the main community but yeah it's good for zero build we had some stack games people hitting on real uh, in terms of overall general interest in the game it seems like that was higher uh, viewership seemed to be decent on the day because people were excited to see what was going on but again, uh, I feel like they'll probably be met with sadness very soon because it's a little bit of a disappointing experience compared to what it would be. But we are in Season 0 of Ranked, which means that we have a long way to go in order to improve it. So who knows where this leads. But for now, we're sort of half and half. And I'm hoping that the tournament loopholes are going to be changed very swiftly in order to reflect what we really want as a core competitive community but we'll see tonight because there is an evaluation cup which we'll be watching on stream thank you so much for watching that's basically your recap of what is going on with fortnite ranked and why it's a bit of an issue i'll see you guys in the next one make sure you subscribe like and goodbye